Hi YouTube, welcome back to another knife review. As you can see, I'll be reviewing the Zero Tolerance 0055. First knife I've gotten in a while, so first review I've done in a while. But this is the ZT 0055, designed by Gustavo Ciccini of GTC Knives. Uh, it's based off the custom GTC Airborne. You can kind of tell in the shape of the handle and of the blade, the similarities between the two. So first off, I'll go over some of the measurements. The overall length is 8.75 inches. Blade length is 3.75 inches. It looks bigger and feels bigger than that, but only 3.75. Uh, blade thickness is 0.16, also kind of feels bigger than that. Uh, handle length is 5 inches, handle thickness is 0.56 inches, and the weight is 5 ounces. Kind of surprised me when I picked it up, how light it felt. Um, it kind of looks like a big, solid titanium knife, so I was expecting it to be a lot heavier, but don't know if we'll be able to see it. Yeah, you can kind of see some of the milling on the inside, hollowing it out, lightening up that frame. So yeah, they removed some weight off the inside. Uh, you get your normal zero tolerance box. I think most zero tolerances come with that nowadays. Um, inside's just some zero tolerance sticker, or not stickers, uh, a little packet showing off other knives I think of theirs. Um, I didn't really pay attention to it too much because of messing with the knife. Um, some of the things about it. The blade is a compound ground flat grind. You can see that one's ground a little deeper. That's a little steeper of a grind. Stone washed. Nice sharp edge on there. It's got a little swedge right there. And if you look really closely, you can kind of see that it's not perfectly even. Not really enough to tell, but slightly uneven. Uh, not a big deal. It uses the SLT flipper. You can see it's hidden away right there when it's closed, peeking out right there. So it pretty much just has a spring right inside there when it's attached to the blade and that spring is attached to the blade where you pull that out and that's your normal flipper and it gets you the leverage to pop it open past the detent. As you can see it shoots out really nice. Really strong deployment. Detent feels great. Uh, if it had light detent, it really wouldn't be the same knife. Uh, I, re I really don't think I'd like it if it didn't have that nice, strong flip. Handles are all milled with a nice pattern. It's got that custom pivot to look like the GTC Customs. Uh, titanium pocket clip, I believe. Could be steel, I don't know. Um, just nice stamped. Kind of goes with the design. The retention's nice. Nothing crazy. Um, nothing too special. Tip up, right hand, left hand carry. You got a lanyard hole. I don't think I'll be putting a lanyard on this one. Uh, I just think it'd probably take away from some of the lines of the knife. Lock bar stabilizer and uh, over travel stop and uh, whatever, the uh, lock bar insert. And you can see the lock up if pull that back. Now I'm using two hands and can't focus it. There we go. Kind of see in there, it's probably about 30% lock up. Locks up really nice. Uh, one of the cool things is back here on the SLT, it says GTC and SLT, so they both share that T, and it's got a little triangle it looks like. 
nice little touch. You can see the flipper in there has a little bit of jimping on it. Nice and grippy. Uh, you can slide off of it if you kind of just pull it like this straight down and try to flip it. Kind of lose it sometimes. When I when I flip it, I usually just pull back and then pop it out. The only thing I can kind of describe the way it feels is like the uh, the slide release on a pistol, like a semi-automatic pistol, pressing the slide release and having the slide move forward. That's kind of like what that that flip feels like. Just really strong kind of mechanical feeling with that spring and everything. It's on the KVT ball bearing system like most zero tolerance, uh, probably all zero tolerance knives now actually. Um, S35VN like normal. There you got their bannering 0055 Kai USA GTC design. Serial number 600 I just looked at that a couple minutes ago. So that's a pretty nice serial number, patent pending, and the Zero Tolerance logo. It's nice, they only put it in one spot. It's not all over, I really didn't even pay attention. Uh, probably 10 minutes ago is the first time I ever looked at this bannering on the side of the blade. I never really paid attention to it before. I had to open it up to make sure it was even there because I couldn't tell or I couldn't remember if I ever saw any writing on the blade because I know that's one of their key things they always do is load up the blade with a bunch of stuff like that. Centering's not bad. I think it came out perfect when I got it and it might have loosened up a little bit. It's kind of over to the right side a little. I haven't tried tightening it or anything but not too far off. If it is off my eyes just might be messed up. I don't know. You can see that backspacer kind of one of the floating backspacers. I believe that's aluminum. Not entirely sure. Blade HQ didn't say specifically, but I'm pretty sure it's just blue anodized aluminum. Um, somebody I was watching, I think Kevin Cleary, um, in one of his knife reviews of this, he made a good point about if you want a custom pocket clip to go on this instead of this boring uh, spring clip and you get a custom titanium clip made um, it's kind of annoying because if you try to anodize it blue it's not going to come out as that same blue as the aluminum because they're both different materials they're not going to be exactly the same so if you try to get it to match it'll probably be a different shade of blue than that which is kind of annoying but Luckily, I like the clip, so I won't need to change it. Another interesting thing, if you flip it open, you can kind of see, might be a little hard, there it is, that round track right inside there. So that round track in there is for the SLT mechanism. It has a part up in there that's a little or down in there that's a little bigger so it needs a little more room to ride through there that is if you look at Epic Snuggle Bunny's video of him taking it down you can see there's a screw uh, a Torx bit and a little cap that comes off and then you can see the bearing because this knife actually has I think three bearings so it has the normal two and then it has one more in the flipper which is pretty cool I don't need to know if that really needed it. Maybe that was just like a little, hey, we'll throw in an extra bearing just for fun. Um, but I don't know, maybe it made it better. Whatever it is, or whatever it did, it feels great. So, little cutouts right there for your thumbs. That feels great. The lock bar feels great. Tension and everything. Nice and smooth. I haven't put any oil or anything on it yet. I think I might try that in a little while to see if I can get a little smoother, but as of right now, it's kind of a rocket, and it really, 
really is smooth. So if you've seen the normal GTC knives, you probably know their prices. They're upwards of $1,000, maybe even upwards of $2,000 for special models. I don't know for sure. But they were always kind of the knife that a normal person can't just go buy. So I really have been liking when uh, really sought after knives from hard to get um, makers like uh, Tashi Barucha, his designs. Um, he's done a lot of collaborations with custom knife or custom knife makers um, and made really cool different knives, tough thumbs to pretty much anybody you can name. I think Terzula, um, the a bunch of the South African knife makers. So he's made a bunch of different designs, but they're all customs, so they're all really expensive. Well, now he's making some different collaborations that are making him his knives cheaper, easier to get. Same with this GTC. There's this one from ZT, and then there's also two from Kershaw, which are his designs, and uh, the two from Kershaw have a special flipper also. It's not an SLT flipper, but it is a bottle opener flipper, which is pretty cool. So it's got a little hook, kind of like that, so you can open beer or a bottle cap. So it's really cool. It's just making his designs more accessible, uh, easier to get for normal people that can't spend thousands of dollars on knives. Even if you do have thousands of dollars and you're trying to get one, there's no guarantee that you'll be able to find one for sale or uh, be able to snag one from somebody. So really, really cool. I really like that. The build quality is amazing. I love the flipper. Uh, I was really looking forward to this knife for a long time. I was hoping that when I went and actually felt it at my local knife store that I'd really like it and right when I felt it I knew I had to have it so picked it up right then and I've carried it for about a week now nothing's knocked it out of the pocket uh, I usually switch knives every day um, when I get a new knife I usually carry it for three or four days probably before I switch and this has been probably six days almost seven maybe and probably going to carry it tomorrow, so love it, love the design, that's all I got to say really, thanks for watching, don't forget to check out my other videos, my other reviews, and my knives and beer series, thanks for watching.